Welcome to tutorial one in Flash animation using Flash CS4, which is available in the school. When you open up uh, Flash animation, which is under uh, CS4, under programs, and you'll see it uh, up near the top of the list of programs, it'll be a, a red icon. And under CS4, open up CS4, you'll see Dreamweaver, you'll also see Flash. And this window will open up. When this window opens up, you generally want to pick Action Script 3. This is the, the most recent uh, tool uh, used in Flash animation. The other ones are earlier additions. So we turn on Action Script 3. And when we do, now your screen may not look quite like mine, but you should somewhere have a toolbar which can be moved. If you don't see a toolbar like this, go up to Window toolbars and you should turn on the one saying edit bar which contains all the tools that are over here as well as in uh, most Adobe uh, programs such as Photoshop elements there's the usual things at the top um, insert view edit file and so on you'll get to know some of these as you go along on the right hand side is something described as properties but there's also something described as a library where you can store things in the program and the properties will give the properties of a tool that you have turned on so your first tool is the selection tool let's go down two tools the free transform tool something called the 3d rotation tool the lasso tool which you of course met in Photoshop elements pen tool, text tool, line tool, rectangle tool. Now notice that the rectangle tool is a little corner, a little arrow on the corner. When you click on it, it opens up and it's got the rectangle tool, the oval tool, the primitive rectangle tool, the oval primitive tool, and the polystar tool. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, click outside. Your next tool is your pencil tool deco tool which gives an art deco or a, some sort of a pattern when you paint things it's sort of like a paintbrush with a pattern the bone tool which is used for uh, making uh, stick men and other objects move the paint bucket the same as you have in uh, elements the dropper tool which allows you to pick uh, a particular color and match it the eraser tool the hand tool the magnify or zoom tool and then you've got your two color boxes, one for the uh, line outside the stroke color and one for the filling um, using the paint bucket. Eh? Down at the bottom, there's something called the object drawing and another one called snap to objects. We don't have to worry about that. Now, we're interested in these parts down here. These are called frames. The area where you're drawing, the white area, um, is called your stage. So let's turn on the first frame. And we're going to call this, we're going to click where it says layer one. So there's layers just as there was in Photoshop. Click on layer one and we're going to call it boomerang. O-O-M-E-R-A-N-G, boomerang, as in the sort of thing you throw, the Australian uh, weapon. All right, now we're gonna turn on a tool. So go to the rectangle tool and turn on the oval tool. Now I wanna pick the color. Um, the outside I'm going to make uh, it's black at the moment I'll keep it black you can pick a color if you want wait till you see what I'm going to draw and then you can decide on your colors uh, the inside is red I'm going to change that color to uh, this sort of purple color and you can change the thickness of the line I'm just going to leave it at uh, was that one I'm going to leave it at one I've changed it there change it to one all right, let's just see what we get. There's my object. It has a black on the outside um, and it's purple on the inside. Now to prove that that's black on the outside, let's, if I select it, so make a box around it, and go back here and change that color to green, you can now see the line on the outside. It's more visible. I can also change the thickness of that line Let's change it to uh, something more visible. We'll make that uh, 2. Enter. All right. 
So you create your oval now on your screen with any two colors you want using the oval tool. All right, done that? Good. Now, turn on your select tool again and bring it close to the oval. If you put it on the edge of the oval, notice what appears at the bottom of the selection arrow, a curve. Put it inside and it's the move tool. But watch what happens when I move it. It moves the inside but not the outside of the circle. Just use control Z as usual to get back to where it was. Now I want to deform this to make it look like a boomerang. So I'm going to click outside, bring it close to the circle until I see that semicircle form. I'm going to stretch it out like that. And I'm going to push it up in the center like that. I'm going to pull this part down. Okay, there's my version of a boomerang because it's sort of curved and seen uh, on an angle. You can make something that looks similar to, like, like, to that. It doesn't have to be identical. All right, go to frame 60. Click on frame 60. Now right click. And when you right click, there's a whole bunch of choices. You can, uh, some of them are turned off, they're in the light color, but the dark ones, insert a frame, keyframe, and blank keyframe, those are the three ones we're interested in usually. We're going to in insert a keyframe. Now notice at the moment, these are every fifth uh, s s uh, frame is gray. The ones in between are white, and the one that we've selected down here is blue. When we insert a keyframe, watch what happens to the color. They all turn gray. What does that mean? Well, click on any cell. And what you can see is it has copied what was in cell 1 to all of those cells in between. Between the first cell and the first frame and the keyframe which we inserted down in 60. They're all identical. Okay, go to any, any cell in between frame 1 and frame 60. Click on it to select it right click and go up to the top and create motion tween create motion tween now when we do this little window pops up it says convert select selection to symbol for tween so in order for it to carry out the motion function it, this object has to be created as what is called a symbol so we click OK we could have done that ourselves back in frame 1 and I'll show you how to do that later on click OK and when it's become a symbol, notice what it has around it, a light blue uh, box. And that's, that's present in every frame now. It looks identical. Go to frame 20 and insert a keyframe. And it gives you a choice. We're going to pick a position keyframe. There's also scale, skew, rotation, and so on. All right. We could have picked all. Here's what I want you to do. So that frame now, notice, has a little dot in it, indicating that it's got a keyframe in it, just like frame 60 has a dot in it and frame 1. Those are the keyframes we have so far. What I want to do now is select the object, hold the uh, pointer above it until you see the move sign, and move it up to the top corner of the screen. And notice what happens. A line appears, and that indicates the path that it will follow the boomerang as it goes from frame 1 to frame 20. So if you go anywhere in between, it's following that line. Now I've shifted it, unfortunately, I, I didn't click carefully. I've noticed I've created a, um, in frame 1, I've created a, what is called a blank keyframe. We'll remove that later on. In fact, we'll remove it right now if you create it. Um, so there we are. In frame 20, it's way up there in the corner. I want to do something else to it. I want to turn on another tool and this is the free transform tool. It's up here near the top, free transform. When you click on it a box appears, a black box, and it allows you to change the shapes. This is a tool that once again you use in Photoshop Elements. It allows you to rotate if you hold it on a corner. If you hold it right on the corner of course you can stretch it out and go up there and rotate. So the boomerang is rotating as it goes from frame 1 to frame 20. So it's following that path and it's also going to rotate. Let's just see. So it starts to rotate until we get to that frame which is now frame 21. Uh, go to frame 40. Once again, insert a keyframe. Okay, and a position keyframe. 
I'm going to do two things. The boomerang is not just rotating, it's coming towards me. So what's going to happen to its size if it's coming towards me? Well, it's going to get bigger. So I'm going to grab a corner and make it bigger. But it's rotating still, so I'm going to go outside a corner and swing it around. There's where it was in frame. You can see I've, I've not released it, so you can see where it was in frame, the original frame 20, and now where it is in frame uh, 40. And I'm going to make it even a bit bigger again. Go to a corner, pull it out diagonally. If you grab it on the center, it, it'll make it wider, but it doesn't stretch it proportionally. That is, the length and width ratio won't be the same. Now, go to frame 60. You notice your, your dot has disappeared, i.e. it's uh, no longer identified as a keyframe. So it is a keyframe, but anyway, we're going to insert a keyframe there. Click on cell 60, right click, insert a keyframe, position again. Now, I'm going to make it really big, but I'm going to swing it around first of all because it's still rotating, the boomerang, and it's coming right out of the screen towards us. Oops, grab her there. And move it more towards the center. So the line is, it went up there and over here, and of course it's been rotating the whole time. Let's see what we've got. We'll go uh, Window, sorry, we'll go Control, test movie. Let's make that big. And so by only drawing the diagram three times, I'm going to close that now, you created a little movie in which the motion, the tween motion function has allowed it, you only had to uh, really draw it uh, three times, or stretch it, change it three times in cells 20, cell 40, and cell 60. You drew it only the first time in cell 1. So it's an easy, quick way to get something moving and uh, changing in, in size, direction, and moving around the screen. So it could be a bouncing ball, it could be any object that you want. Eh? Right, save your work and call this um, Tutorial 1. Sh uh, Tutorial one, tween. Tutorial one, tween. Thank you.